Well, good morning. Today I've come back to a small river that I fished for many, many years for Barbel and Chubb, but they're not on my mind today because unfortunately they're a thing of the past. Today's all about roving around the river and dropping a small live bait, which I've caught when I got here earlier, uh, into a few swims that I've had some decent perch before. Now, as you can see, conditions aren't brilliant. We've got bright blue sky and I've arrived later than I would have liked because unfortunately I got caught up in traffic or there was an accident and I had to take a long route round. So um, it's going to be a very quick fast session. There's a few swims that I know contain perch or used to and to be perfectly honest if you've got a small live bait and you drop it in there on a sunken pat and oster if it's hungry you're going to know about it pretty quick. We're into a fish, big perch as well. This is what we came for. Happy days. Tiny little river, big perch. Small streams, big fish, especially perch. This came in my first swim after about 15 minutes, a little bit longer than normal. This is a swim I know is normally productive for perch and believe me, when you cast a little live in there, the float doesn't settle most times. So I was a bit concerned that they weren't here anymore, but after about 15 minutes, the little live, the float started bouncing around. I knew she was coming. This one's probably about, I'd get, take a guess, no more than about 2.8, 2.4, 2.8. I know there's a, a much bigger perch that lives in this one, this swim. So when the float goes, you hook a, fight, hook a fish, you certainly get excited. So I'm gonna get this one back and then move around, come back here in a couple of hours when it's settled and uh, hopefully get that, uh, get the big girl out of here. Well, that first swim didn't take long, did it? About 15 minutes and that lovely perch came along. It actually weighed two pounds, six ounces. So a cracking fish, a great start. Not the biggest in here. I'm looking for something at least a pound bigger than that. And uh, they are around. And let me just run through the rig I'm using. This is a sunken Pat rig, and I'm using a small live bait. I actually got a few lives this morning when I got here. The minnows are a nightmare, but I did manage to catch a couple of little dace and a couple of little chublets. So that's, um, that's gonna be what I'm using first. Keep me going. Minnows will be used as a backup. And as you can see, I haven't bought a lot of kit. I've got a rucksack with all my bits in, my scales, my tackle box, my flask. I've got my big mat, big oversized mat again. That doubles up as a seat if I feel I'm gonna sit in a swim for a little bit longer. A landing net, not a big landing net because the chances of catching big pike here are very, you know, not very uh, likely and a small rod rest just to actually put the rod up if I'm in a difficult swim. And of course, my bucket there with my four live baits, which uh, have got me going already. So the rig itself, as I said, is a sunken pattern oster. And I'm using one of these chubber floats. This one's a six and a half gram loafer, and that can be moved up the actual line. And just, uh, and as I said, it's a float, but we're not gonna be looking at the float. That's gonna be under the surface. And what the float does is it keeps trying to get to the surface and it keeps your bait from getting to the bottom because at the bottom of your main line is a small lead. And I'll try and use the smallest one possible. This one is a third of an ounce, half an ounce actually. If it's a faster river, you'll need a bigger lead, obviously. And then the boom coming up to a three-way swivel is what we call a rotten bottom. It's only five pound fluorocarbon that is. So if I, that actual lead gets caught in a snag or the fish snags me and the, I can break the lead off, but I can still have the fish on. As, as I said, here we've got a three-way swivel and a short hook link, which is seven pound fluorocarbon. So it's slightly heavier than the weak link. And my main line is eight pound. And on that, as you can see, it's shorter. So all the time, the fish is trying to get to the bottom or swimming away and the float is pulling it up to the surface. So what the sunken pattern oster does, it, it makes your bait actually work for you all day, sending off vibrations and if there's a hungry predator around, 
the only thing that's going to happen is unfortunately he's going to be dinner. Well, you might be using little live baits, and believe me, quite often you can catch perch. They will take the same size live bait as what they are. This one's what six ounces, and it took a quite a big, quite a big day sat did. Had about three goes at that, so uh, I was aware it was a small fish down there, but one for the future. Can't always catch the biggest one, but it's just nice to get a little bit of action. Well, the rod I'm using is a barbell rod but it might sound over over gun but big perch do fight really hard especially on these small streams when there's a lot of snags around so you need a powerful rod and i've actually teamed that up with the tip that's got a four ounce tip and the quiver tip is my eyes that's my fight indication even though i'm using a float the float is under the water doing a different job keeping the, the bait up in the water so i'm watching the quiver tip and quite often what you'll see is you'll see a sharp jab on the actual rod tip, on the quiver tip, and then as you look downstream, you'll see the float pop up and lay flat on the surface. And then you just wind down, I'm just using a fixed ball wheel loaded with eight pound line, just wind down and just a short, sharp strike. And one last thing is I'm using quite small hooks here, because I'm only using small baits. I'm using size 10 barbless hooks, and I just lip up those, a little bit of elastic band, actually on the fit on the hook to keep the fish actually on and um, yeah powerful kick because perch do fight really hard Three swims, three perch. Lost a good fish in this swim, which I think was a big perch. Um, quite a few little indications in here, and finally, this one came along again. Only a small one, but if you can catch the smallest, you can catch the biggest. So, uh, unfortunately, held up in traffic this morning, so I'm going to have to cut the session a lot shorter than I would have liked. But um, another day, you'd have three big perch through here, so uh, just got to keep moving around and finding those fish. Well, I'm going to knock this session on the head a bit early actually because uh, we've got an algae bloom and the river's gone from being just a tinge of colour to quite coloured, which is not perfect for perch. The sun's come out, it's really bright, but I've, uh, I've covered the three swims I really wanted and I've had a response in each. Obviously the first swim you saw I had that lovely perch 2.6, so I've got to be happy with that. Second swim, just a small swing of perch and a, a bite that I missed. And in the last swim, lost a really good fish, which I've got that gut feeling was a big perch. But there's always another day. And I also landed one up there. So uh, all in all, quite a nice little productive morning. Shame I've got to go early and I've got to be a little bit late. So uh, I'll be back and hopefully uh, catch one of those big girls that's swimming around here.